The program you are about to hear has been pre-recorded for airing at this time. Please hold all phone calls. Once again, this is a pre-recorded program. The views and opinions of the guests on the Wileener Show are those of the guests and are not necessarily the views and opinions of the hostess Wileener and or her co-host. Vegas Queen of Gospel. First of all, I really do appreciate your listening and viewing my show every week. I would greatly appreciate your financial assistance as well to keep my show on the air. Please just make some type of contribution. $5, $10, $20, $50, $100 or more. Whatever you desire. Please log on to www.wileenertvshow.com and click the pay button. Or please send your check or money order to Wileener, that's spelled W-Y-L-E-A-N-E-R, to 420 North Nellis Boulevard, Suite A3, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89110. Also, if you would like to be a guest on the show, please call 702-242-2100 or email me at wileenertvshow at aol.com. That's all for now. And thanks again for your continued support. Blessings to you, too. And this is where the rubber meets the road. All right, all right, all right. Y'all know this where the rubber meets the road. I don't have to tell you that too many times, do it. Well, if I do, I want to tell you right now, this is where <laughs> the rubber meets the road. And I just want to welcome everybody back today. I want to welcome my listeners that are listening in on KKVV 1060 AM on your radio dial right here in Las Vegas, Nevada. I want to give my shout out to uh, my first off, I want to welcome my viewers that are viewing over there, right there. Hey, y'all, over there viewing on uh, uh, WileenaTVShow.com and those who are viewing on KKVV.com. I am so happy that y'all are here with us today. Uh, I, oh, boy, I tell you, y'all know I, I get, I just get tongue-tied and twisted all up sometimes. I get so happy and excited. And so what I want to say, too, is I want to uh, welcome anyone that is viewing uh, on, uh, that is viewing any of the uh, previous shows that we've had and that we have on YouTube, you know, so you can watch previous shows on YouTube if you like and uh, on Ustream. And then, of course, y'all know I have to give all my shout-outs again. Give my shout outs to KKVV. This is the place to be. My production guy's over there giving me the salute. Hey, how you doing? Salute, salute, salute. We got two over there. I got y'all got double help today, y'all. I got double help. I'm excited about that. And I just want to say uh hello out there to Mr. Fred Hodges. I know he's around somewhere doing what he do, doing just what he do. And Brenda, wherever she is out there doing what she does too. This is a wonderful place over here, KKVV, and I'm excited about being here. So if you want to do a show, this is KKVV the place to be? All right, and y'all know I got to do it. Got to do it. Got to do it. Whether you want to hear it or not, I got to give that shout out to my hun, 
honey pie. My husband, I have to tell my husband I love him. Hey, baby, I love you, honey. I know you out there somewhere just giving your girl all kind of support. And I'm not mad at you because I just love you for doing it. And I want to say hello to my children. You know, today is my son's birthday. Antonio, it is his birthday. My son, Antonio, just turned the big 4-0. Happy birthday, Antonio. Happy birthday to you. Anyway, I'm not going to sing the whole song because y'all be like, man, did she come on the air just to sing happy birthday or what today? But that's not what I did. I just wanted to give a shout out to my son. And then, of course, my daughter who's about to jump the broom, she's getting ready to get married, and I'm excited about that. She's excited about it, and so am I. Yes, indeed, Miss Samantha is about to jump the broom, her and Mr. J, and I'm excited to have Mr. J as my brand new, brand new future son-in-law. I think it's just going to be wonderful. My family is growing, and I can't wait for babies and all that kind of good stuff. Y'all know how it works. <laughs> Anyway, uh, grandchildren, I want to give a shout out to the grandkids and stuff. I love all the grandkids. Uh, my sister-in-law, Diane, that's my girl right there. I just want to holler at her and my niece, Sierra. So many others. And I want to uh, give a special shout out to my to my sponsor, my brand new sponsor, MBDA. MBDA is a, a great organization that will help you with your business plan and all kind of business stuff. So if you got business issues, honey, you better try to go talk to MBDA. And we're gonna, uh, you're gonna hear more about them as we go on. Okay, so if you want to know what kind of show this is, this is a show where we talk to different denominations and and and, and uh, beliefs about what they teach and what they believe. And I've had men so far on the show. Well, let me tell you the news. I got the news for you today, y'all. It's a woman thing. It's a woman thing. Oh, yeah. I got the females that's coming today, okay? So it's got it's going to be on in just a few minutes. We are going to have the females. And y'all know what happens when women get together. The rubber meets the road. We'll see you in a minute. Hi, this is Wileena, the Las Vegas Queen of Gospel. First of all, I really do appreciate your listening and viewing my show every week. I would greatly appreciate your financial assistance as well to keep my show on the air. Please just make some type of contribution, $5, $10, $20, $50, $100 or more, whatever you desire. Please log on to www.wileenertvshow.com and click the pay button. Or please send your check or money order to Wileener, that's spelled W-Y-L-E-A-N-E-R to 420 North Nellis Boulevard, Suite A3, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89110. Also, if you would like to be a guest on the show, please call 702-242-2100 or email me at show at aol.com. That's all for now, and thanks again for your continued support. Blessings to you, too. And this is where the rubber meets the road. Guess what? Y'all see some women? Is y'all looking at the females? <laughs> we got the women here today, and they are on the set. On the set. We got the females, and I'm getting ready to go ahead and start introducing them. Now, before I do that, I just want to quickly tell you, if you have a special event that you would like for me to announce on the Wileena Show, I would be more than happy to do that as long as your event is going on or whatever for a small fee of $20. So make sure you contact me if you want to, if you want to announce your special event on the Wileena Show. Okay, our first guest, well, not first guest, but uh, the first guest that I'm going to introduce, okay? First guest that I'm I'm going to introduce to you today is her name is Adele Hancock. Adele Hancock says she received Yeshua, Jesus, as her Savior when she was 10 years old. She was led to study Yahweh, Yahshua, from their Jewish content. Adele was a police officer, patrol, and plain clothes for eight years. Senior building inspector for 10 years. She is presently licensed with the ICC, International Code Council for Commercial Plumbing. Electrical, medical, and uh, I'm sorry, electrical, mechanical, and structural cons construction. Miss Adele is a is licensed as a general contractor with the state of Nevada, and she also has a bachelor's degree in counseling. Adele has two adult children and three grandchildren, and she has lived in Las Vegas since 1985. Ladies and gentlemen, she's been here for quite some time. Of the non-denominational 
Here we go again, y'all. You know about the non-denominational. Y'all know every time I come on, I keep bringing some non-denominationals. Okay, non-denominational Judaism belief. I would like to welcome to to uh, to my show today, Miss Adele Hancock. Miss Adele, how are you today? Good, thank you. All right, wonderful. Thank you for coming on the show. I really appreciate it. Are you ready for the rubber to meet the road? I am. Oh, she says I am. <laughs> Boy, I tell you, y'all know how it is. I done told y'all what it's going to be like when you get a bunch of women together. Don't don't somebody know already what it's like when you get a bunch of females together? That's just how it works, okay? And and, and, and when we get these women together, uh, women just know how to make the rubber meet the road. Am I right, Miss Adele? You're right. All righty then. And so, uh, Miss Adele, we, we got about a minute to give you a chance to just say hello to my listening and viewing audience. Would you like to go ahead and do that? I'd like to say hello, and, and it's a great opportunity to be with you, and hopefully, uh, I know we're going to have a good time, and I look forward to the questions you're going to ask. All right, wonderful, wonderful. You, well, you just keep right on looking forward to them questions, honey, because I got them lined up for you. I don't even think we're going to have enough time to cover all the questions that I have for you today. But, of course, we will come back again next week, and that's how we do things here on the Wileena Show. We always come back with a part two because part one just does not cover it all. Even part two doesn't cover it all, right? And so we just come back again for uh, part one, and uh, I mean for part two, and, and give it another shot, you know, and try to see if we can get uh, get some more information out there about you, whoever you are, and what you teach and what you believe. And so we've got another guest that I'm going to be introducing to you, but what I'm going to do first is I'm going to take a, a, another commercial break, because y'all know I have to pay bills. Y'all have to go buy sponges. I tell y'all the time, go buy some sponges. Do something. Go buy some sponges. Help a sister out. Pay some bills. Oh, you know what? I'll say this in my last little 30 seconds. Don't forget my email address, show at AOL.com. Email me sometime. Guess what? We're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, the rubber is going to meet the road. We'll see you in just a minute. Hi, this is Wylena, the Las Vegas Queen of Gospel. First of all, I really do appreciate your listening and viewing my show every week. I would greatly appreciate your financial assistance as well to keep my show on the air. Please just make some type of contribution, $5, $10, $20, $50, $100 or more, whatever you desire. Please log on to www.wileenertvshow.com and click the pay button. Or please send your check or money order to Wileener, that's spelled W-Y-L-E-A-N-E-R to 420 North Nellis Boulevard, Suite A3, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89110. Also, if you would like to be a guest on the show, please call 702-242-2100 or email me at wileenertvshow at aol.com. That's all for now, and thanks again for your continued support. Blessings to you, too. And this is where the rubber meets the rubber. Okay, listen, I have my second guest here, and I'm excited about her as well. I am so happy to have these two women on here. And so let me go ahead and tell you who she is. Evangelist, uh, Evangelist Andrina Jackson. And she's going to correct me if I mess it up because y'all know how women is. They just don't let you butcher their name too bad. But anyway, Evangelist Andrina Jackson has been brought up in the gospel from a young person. At the age of 13, she received the Holy Ghost under the administration of Elder B. E. McCurdy. I think that's E.B.E. E. McCurdy of Revival Temple Church of God in Christ. There she exercised herself spiritually in attending Bible Band, YPWW, uh, Home Foreign Mission, and Youth Service. She also did some teaching and preaching when she was requested to do so by her leader. She served as a member of the local youth department as well as the state youth department. While at Revival Temple, she also served on the Youth Usher Board, commun uh, Communion Usher Board, Youth Choir, Puritan Choir, local youth department, as well as the state youth department. Youth, youth, youth. She seems to really love the young 
close. In May 1998, she was baptized according to Acts 2.38 in Jesus' name under the administration of Elder Gamble of Newness of Light. From that exact moment, the scales fell off of her eyes re regarding the true gospel of Jesus Christ. From October 1999 to June 2003, she served faithfully under the administration of Pastor Mother Ruthie Smith of A Better Way. There she served as evangelist minister to the pastor where she preached and taught the good news of Jesus Christ. In 2006, the Lord Jesus Christ uh, unctioned her to go help Bible Way Apostolic Ministries under the administration of Bishop T. Lester. There at Bible Way Apostolic Ministries, she assists her leader in teaching Sunday school and Bible study. She also involves herself in writing church tracts for the ministry as well as in, as uh, as insisting her leader to baptism services and uh, I think that's assisting her leader in baptism services and making sure everyone truly understands what the gospel is and I want to welcome to the show Evangelist Andrina Jackson how are you doing Evangelist I'm doing good all right now go ahead on and whoop me up whoop me up about the name did I mess you up too bad a lot of people say Andriana Andrina okay so how do I pronounce your name correctly because we got a long time Andrina. to spend it. Andrina. Okay. All right. Uh, Evangelist Andrina. And I may just kind of just say Evangelist Jackson or something. Is that, go is yeah, that okay? Go That'll probably be a little easier for me. Okay. So Evangelist Andrina Jackson, welcome to the show. And would you like to say a couple of quick words before we take our next break? I would just like to thank you for having me. I count this as an honor and a privilege to be on your show. All right. Well, wonderful. Wonderful. Well, I count it as an honor and a privilege to have you as a guest and to have these two females on the Wild Leader Show because y'all know what's getting ready to happen. We're going to take a break and we'll be right back. Hi, this is Wileena, the Las Vegas Queen of Gospel. First of all, I really do appreciate your listening and viewing my show every week. I would greatly appreciate your financial assistance as well to keep my show on the air. Please just make some type of contribution, $5, $10, $20, $50, $100 or more, whatever you desire. Please log on to www.wileenertvshow.com and click the pay button. Or please send your check or money order to Wileener, that's spelled W-Y-L-E-A-N-E-R to 420 North Nellis Boulevard, Suite A3, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89110. Also, if you would like to be a guest on the show, please call 702-242-2100 or email me at wileenertvshow at aol.com. That's all for now, and thanks again for your continued support. Blessings to you, too, and this is where the rubber meets the road. All right, y'all. Okay, okay, okay. We are back. We are back. We are back. Yes, indeed. And we are getting ready to get some dialogue going here with these two females here. And one is non-denominational Judaism. Interesting, huh? Non-denominational Judaism. And the other is apostolic. And I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it correctly, but I think it's apostolic or apostolic. How do we say that, evangelist? Is it apostolic or apostolic? Apostolic. Apostolic. Okay. So we have apostolic. There I go again. We have apostolic, apostolic, and uh, non-denominational uh, Judaism. Okay, so now what I want to say before I get into the, uh, the to the to the heart of the matter is I want to tell the callers. Okay, callers, you are allowed to call in. Now give us a minute to strike up some dialogue here, and then you know how you know how how this flows. Uh, but the phone numbers are seven zero two six five zero five five eight eight. That's seven zero two six five zero five five eight eight. Go ahead and document that number. Okay, and then if you're calling from uh, Japan or 
Europe or somewhere, England, I don't care, uh, call 800-366-8883. That's 1-800-366-8883. Now, remember what I always tell you. Be respectable to my guests, okay? You have the, we, we agree to disagree on the Wiley and the Show. You don't have to. I'm not saying you have to agree with everything they say. That's not what it's all about. You can say, well, no, that's not accurate. I don't believe that to be true. And can you prove it and tell me where you got that information from and that type of thing? That's okay. But just make sure you be respectable to my guests because I do have somebody over there that will. And he's invisible to you, but he's not to me. And I guarantee you, he will introduce you to a new clique, which is hang up on you. All right. So just be respectable to my guests when you call into the Wiley and the Show. All right. So let's talk about these two denominations here. And let's let's get into, uh, let's. I'm going to read a little bit of information that I have here uh, on, apost on apostolic. On apostolic. Okay. Uh, the apostolic church is a Pentecostal Christian denomination. And evangelist um, Jackson, if there's anything that's incorrect, uh, you can correct me when we when, when I give you the opportunity to do so, okay? Okay. All right. So uh, a, apostolic uh, church is a Pentecostal Christian denomination, uh, which can trace its origins back to the 1904-1905 Welsh Revival. Despite the relatively recent origin of the denomination, the church seeks to stand for first century Christianity in its faith, practices, and government. The purpose of the denomination is summed up by one prominent apostolic writer as to make known worldwide the forgiveness of sins through the atoning death of Christ, the baptism in water by immersion, the baptism of the Holy Ghost with signs following the nine gifts of the Holy Ghost, the five gifts of our ascended Lord, and the vision referred to in the New Testament as the church which is his body. The worldwide vision of the church is evidenced by a strong missionary concern. The movement, which commenced in Welsh-speaking villages of South Wales, had by the end of the 20th century grown to over 6 million members in more than 70 nations. The largest national church is the Apostolic Church of Nigeria, with over 4 point five million members wow and the national convention center that seats over one hundred thousand whoo now that is some very interesting information about apostolic would you uh, agree evangelist jackson yes i will agree and do you have any elaboration on that? Give us a brief, uh, give us a brief synopsis of what uh, apostolic denomination teach and believe, please. What what the apostolic um, church basically teaches is we teach being born again in Jesus' name. Um, we teach. Um, we teach the body of Jesus Christ that we are many members and we have many functions in the body of Christ, but we all need one another in the body of Christ. Uh, we teach about the gifts. We teach that Jesus gave us all gifts and we are to operate those gifts for the building and the equipping of the members of the body of Christ. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, now you you stated you said something about uh, um, oh I caught something that you said I was going to ask you uh, the gifts. Can you explain those gifts to me? You mentioned something about gifts. Um, yes, I did. I mentioned something about the gifts. Uh, we are all born in. And um, what we teach is that we teach that everybody that is born is born with a gift. They are born with a gift, but they have that choice to use that gift for God or to use it for themselves. Mm 
Mm-hmm. And and in the church, we teach that the gifts are to be used for the edifying of the body of Christ. Okay, okay. And so uh, those gifts that you're talking about, it can be any type of gift? Um, What, what I'm speaking of is like, um, say for instance, you're born with the gift to sing. You are to use that, you are to use your voice for the edification of God. You were born with the gift to, um, you... You were born with the gift to teach, you know. Okay. Um, you are to use that gift to teach about the good news of Jesus Christ. Okay. All right. Did I read something about uh, nine? Let me see here. Holy Holy Ghost. Uh, okay. The baptism of the Holy Ghost with signs following the nine gifts of the Holy Ghost. Can you uh, elaborate on that? Oh, dealing with the nine gifts of the Spirit? Yes. What What are those gifts? The nine gifts of the Spirit is, um, that would be speaking in tongues. Um, okay. you, you have a gift of, uh, when when you first receive the Holy Ghost, when 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 you first um, receive the Holy Ghost, you you also um, get the gifts of the Spirit, you know. Okay, what is the Holy Ghost? The Holy Ghost is a promise that was promised to us from from God himself where he promised to send down the Holy Ghost which was a comforter which is a guide which is to lead and guide us into all truth. It is God living with inside us ourselves, the Holy Ghost which is God's spirit. And um the Holy Ghost is like a GPS system. <laughs> uh, when when we going down the wrong road, the Holy Ghost will let us know, uh uh-uh, uh uh uh, you messing up, uh uh-uh, uh, <laughs> you on the wrong road. You know, it's just like having the GPS systems in your car. You know, so we have the GPS system, which is God Himself, with Ooh. inside our bodies. Okay. And then, um, along with the Holy Ghost, once you, once you get the Holy Ghost, it comes the gifts of the Spirit. There's there's different gifts of the Spirit. There's the um. Um, there's the gift of <laughs> divers tongues, where when how you know before I get into divers tongues, how you know that you got the Holy Ghost, your your initiation is speaking in tongues. Okay, wait a minute, hold on. What what are you talking about tongues now? Speaking in tongues. I think I had something like that on my on my on my question uh, list. See, I was going to ask you a little bit about <laughs> speaking in tongues, but you know what? Just wait a minute. Hold on a minute, because I, I think you're getting a little a little ahead of me here, and 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 you know this this is my show, so I got to handle things. You know, just just give me a minute, okay? See, I already told y'all when you get some women in the room, you get women <laughs> together in the same room. You know, women just get to get the saying things and stuff. So I have to kind of. Uh, 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 slow things down here. Let me just move move a little bit into the other direction, and then I'm gonna come back to you in just a minute, okay? Because I see you got plenty to say. All right, so just hold on. <laughs> oh no, 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 we gonna let the road be the road in just a minute. But I wanna hear about. I wanna say something to you about my other guest here, who is non-denominational Judaism. Okay, non-denominational Judaism, and I'm gonna read a little bit of information here that I have for you. Now, this is pretty deep, and I'm so I'm 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 gonna try not to get too tongue-tied and twist it all up because some of the words here are, are kind of hard for me. But I'm gonna do the best I can, and then of course my guests can make any corrections that need to be made as time goes on. Judaism is the religion is the religion, philosophy, and way of life of the Jewish people. Judaism is a monotheistic religion with its main inspiration being based on or found in the Hebrew Bible, also known as the Tanakh, which has been explored in later texts, such as the Talmud, I believe I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, Judaism is considered by religious Jews to be the expression of the conventional relationship God established with the children of Israel. Judaism is not a homogeneous religion and embraces a number of streams and views. Today, rabbinic Rabbinic Judaism 
is the most numerous stream and holds that God revealed his laws and commandments to Moses on Mount Sinai in the form of both the written and oral Torah. Historically, this assertion was challenged by various groups such as the Sadducees and Hellenistic Judaism during the Second Temple period. The Karaites and Sabbateans during the early and later medieval period, and among segments of the modern reform movements. Liberal movements in modern times, such as humanistic, uh, humanistic Judaism, may be non-theistic. Today, the largest Jewish re religious movements are Orthodox Judaism, uh, Haredi, Judaism and modern Orthodox Judaism, conservative Judaism, and reform Judaism. A major source of difference between these groups is their approach to Jewish law. Orthodox Judaism maintains that the Torah and Jewish law are defined in origin, eternal, and unalterable, and that they should be strictly followed. Conservative and Reform Judaism are more liberal, with Conservative Judaism generally promoting a more traditional interpretation of Judaism's requirements than Reform Judaism. A typical Reform position is that Jewish law should be reviewed, I mean, should be viewed as a set of general guidelines rather than as a set of restrictions and obligations whose observ observance is required of all Jews. Historically, special courts enforced Jewish law. Today, these courts still exist, but the practice of the Judaism is mostly voluntarily. Authority on theological and legal matters is not vested in any one person or organization, but in the sacred texts and rabbis and scholars who interpret them. Okay, so my guest, uh, Miss Adele, uh, Miss Adele, uh, would you like to elaborate on what I just read and uh, make any corrections or or additions that you that you want to make to uh, this particular Ju uh, non-denominational Judaism belief, Judaism, uh, if you will? Yes, uh, they Judaism overall has a rejection of Yeshua as Messiah, and uh, so I just want to add. There are many Jewish people who have accepted Yeshua as Messiah. Okay, now Yeshua is? Yeshua is Jesus. Jesus, okay, go ahead. And so, but these people do not feel comfortable in a Christian setting because of pagan practices that were brought into the church in 325 A.D. under Constantine. Okay, now what does pagan mean? Pagan are practices that came from sun god worship, from the Tower of Babel. And a lot of Gentiles are not familiar with these pagan practices, and they've accepted them because they're common to them. They're Who is familiar. a Gentile? A Gentile would be anybody that's not Jewish. I'm a Gentile? You would be. You calling you, me a Gentile? If you're not Jewish. Are you calling me a Gentile? That's Jewish? all I'm asking. Are you calling me a Gentile? <laughs> Yes, ma'am. <laughs> I want to know, are you calling me a Gentile on my show right here on the Wally in the Show? You calling me a Gentile? Yes, ma'am. Okay, all right. She said, I'm a Gentile, y'all. Go ahead. <laughs> Woo, I'll be a Gentile on my show today. Go ahead. Let me be a Gentile. Go ahead. The early believers of Yeshua, Yahshua, were... Jewish. Now, is that pronounced Yahshua or Yeshua? Yahshua. I've heard it pronounced more than one way. Well, I've heard uh, people say Yeshua. Yeshua. But Yeshua, when translated into a Hebrew context, does not translate. You cannot. The, the word for Yahshua is, is Y-A-H-S-H-U-A. Yahshua. So how does Jesus come out of that? Well, when the, when the Catholic Church began, they translated that into a Gentile text, which is Jesus after Joshua. Wait a minute now. Okay, you said Jesus is what? 
A Gentile text. It's a Gentile reference. Okay. Okay. From the Roman Catholic Church. Okay. And it is not. But that doesn't mean it's wrong, right? Cause, cause you call me a Gentile. Right. Now, <laughs> And I'm not about to be wrong on my show. <laughs> so you better fix that real quick. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> what that means is when the uh, Roman Catholic Church started, or Christianity, before that, the followers of Jesus, or Yahshua, were called followers of the way. Okay. And in 325 A.D., the Constantine, who was the emperor of Rome, he established the... Catholic Church and Christianity and he passed a law saying anyone who was a Roman citizen was now a Christian and a member of the Catholic Church okay so wait a minute you're saying that Christianity began uh, when 325 AD 325 AD that's when Christianity it started that's when it all got started all of Christianity right so what was before Christianity uh, the people who were followers of Yeshua kept all Jewish practices. So everybody was Jewish, even the Gentiles? Even the Gentiles. were. It was considered a sect of Judaism. Okay, so everybody was under Judaism until... Until when? Three? 325 A.D. Until 325 A.D. A.D. stands for after death. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. After Jesus, Yeshua died right that's right okay so Constantine made this change and made everybody Christian yes and he also what he did is he passed a law he said if anybody does anything Jewish it's they it's penalty of death oh so no one who were traditional Jewish or followers of Yeshua could do anything Jewish or they ran the risk of being killed well and what made him killed. so special who was he to make that kind of change anyway in the first place? I mean, if because it, uh, it sounds like it was a drastic change. Uh, so who was this Constantine guy that felt that he had the right to step up to the plate and tell everybody what they had, what they could be and what they couldn't be? Was he, who was he? He wasn't God, I can tell that. I know that for sure. So what gave him the right to make those decisions for the rest of the world? He was the Caesar of Rome. And in that position, it's like uh, President Obama make, passing a law that said everybody would be a certain denomination. And penalty uh, uh, of certain practices would be penalized under death. Okay. This is what Constantine, using his position, made that decision. And he, he stopped any Jewish practices under penalty of death. And he implemented pagan practices he was a sun god worshiper which whoa sun god worshiper yes okay well wait a minute <laughs> look like this constantine dude was uh, a bit much for everybody if you ask me on the wilina show i'm saying constantine must have been a force to be reckoned with uh my evangelist uh, uh, Jackson, over here, are you familiar with Constantine and the laws that Constantine made and changed? I'm a little bit familiar with, with Constantine. Okay, so you have heard of Constantine. Yes, I have heard of Constantine. Oh, okay, now under your, under your denominational belief and teaching uh, apostolic, under apostolic faith and teaching, do, does your... Uh, denomination teach anything in relation to Constantine making any changes at all or does your uh, belief don't talk about Constantine at all no dead air on the radio <laughs> actually, <laughs> actually actually when, when it comes to Constantine dealing with him uh, we do discuss that um, he was one of those that was in charge of persecuting the church of the believers oh Okay, so uh, he was he was uh, he was a persecutor. He persecuted the the church and the believers. Correct. Uh, uh, so is that the same Constantine that you're familiar with, um, uh, uh, Miss Adele? Yes, he persecuted many many Jewish people. Were killed for their beliefs and okay. for their practices. Okay. 
because they would not take up pagan practices. A Jewish person is forbidden to take the pagan practices of the Gentiles. Wow. Okay. Well, I tell you what, ladies. I I want to get into some. I want to get into some uh uh some questions here. Uh, I I want to talk to you, ladies, about. I want to get your your views on. Well, first of all, do you use the Bible? It, uh, oh, we have a caller. We have a caller on hold, and 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 one of the things, ladies, I have to let you know, my callers come first. I gotta let my callers get in because they like to talk to my guests and they like to uh, get their word in. Okay, and and this looks like this is one of my regular callers. Here, let me take this call right here. Hold up. Hello, caller. How you doing? Great, great day, Walina. <laughs> Yes, I got two questions for Miss Hancock and Miss Jackson. Okay, Mr. <laughs> Terry from North Las Vegas. <laughs> yes, that's right, uh, Miss Hancock. Now, if I went to a Sabbat class today, they'd be talking about Andonai, creator and ruler of the universe. That's number one. And Miss Jackson, I thought the apostolics say that they don't allow women to teach in the pulpit. Is that right? And I take the answers off the air. Oh, Play you better me. take that off the air, Terry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Woo! That's the rubber meet the road questions right there. Ladies, y'all got those questions? Yes. Okay, so go right ahead, and uh, whoever want to go first is fine by me. No, no, no. That That is not correct. Um, the apostolics do not teach that the women cannot teach, and it does not teach that the women cannot preach because... Because we go according to the word of God, and we recognize that in the Old Testament, God used Deborah with dealing with the children of Israel as a judge, which means a leader. And then we also recognize under the New Testament that Paul gave ecclesiastes to a lot of women that was that was side by side with the other apostles in the gospel. Hello, <laughs> Terry. I know you have to listen, Terry. So I guess you heard that. That was a rubber meet the road answer right there. Okay, <laughs> Terry. I thank you for listening every week. Let's go over here and see what Miss Adele has to say about uh, her question. Go ahead, Miss Adele. If you go to a Shabbat class, and yes, they will speak of Adonai or Yahweh. That's, those are both names for God. And, uh, but for believers in Yahshua, they, on Shabbat, they also speak in reference to, they've incorporated the beliefs of Yahshua. Okay, now uh, y'all need to. You, you need to. You're gonna have to help my viewing and listening audience out here a little bit, because uh, I hear you saying Shabbat, and uh, you know, I mean, some people have tuned in before and they know what that means because they've heard it on the show before from a previous guest. But then some new, new, new listeners or viewers may not know what you're talking about. So please explain what is Shabbat. Shabbat is the Sabbath. Okay, that's another word for Sabbath. Is yes. that correct? Yes. Or that, that means Sabbath? Yes. It, okay. It, and when is Sabbath? Sabbath, is fr it begins at sundown on Friday and ends Saturday at sundown. Okay. And this was given at Mount Sinai from Moses. Okay. So let me ask this question since, we, since, uh, since my, my listener out there, Mr. Terry, st st started this, this thing here. He just got this moving right now. So I want to ask the two of you ladies, uh, I believe that I already know the answer from Adele, but I'm going to ask, I'm going to start with uh, uh, Evangelist Jackson. What is your regular day of worship? Um. Our regular day of worship is um, we do keep the Sabbath. We have we have a Sabbath service on Saturday, and we have Sunday worship service as well. Whoa! And you what? And you what denominational belief? At Bible Way Apostolic Ministries, we <laughs> believe in keeping the Sabbath because it's in the Word of God. It says to reference the Sabbath and to keep that day holy. So we believe in referencing the Sabbath and being in God's house on the Sabbath. Whoa, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, <laughs> boy, I tell you, y'all know I just get all twisted up on the Wileena show. Boy, so under the apostolic church, 
belief. Today is the Sabbath for you? Under your belief, today is the Sabbath? Correct. And you also, so you, so you have worship service on the seventh day Sabbath? Yes. Hello, y'all. Now, that's where the rubber meets the road. Right there. Okay. Uh, Miss Adele, is today the Sabbath for you as well? Today is the Sabbath. And again, that was changed for the church to make Sabbath a Sunday observance. And it is still practiced with many of the church followers today, of course. Yeah. Well, uh I'm I'm just a little bewildered right now because I've had a lot of denominational teachings and a lot of beliefs on my show, and for me to bring on an apostolic and apostolic says that they keep seven day Sabbath, which is Saturday. That is, uh, uh, that's different. <laughs> yes, we do. That is different. Can I uh, comment on? Yes, that? you sure can. Because honey. go as right ahead. Bible way. Bible Way Apostolic Ministries, we believe in doing everything the Bible way. Hello. And the Bible says to keep it and to do it. We do. teach to keep it and to do it. Well, I be, I be wine leader on the wine leader show, and I'll be where the rubber meets the road right now. <laughs> Okay, listen, ladies. I want to. I, you know, the the show is winding down, but I tell you what, I want to. I want to hit on something, and then, of course, we're gonna we're gonna finish it next week. I want to talk to y'all about the Ten Commandments. So, so this is how we're gonna run this today. I want to read a commandment to you, each one of you, the same commandment, and I want you to give me your interpretation under your denomination of belief. What does that commandment mean to you? Okay, so the first commandment is now. I have a book here that I picked up, and it says Ten Commandments Twice Removed. And it uh, looks like it was written by somebody named Danny Shelton and Shelley Quinn or something. And uh, I picked this book up here. And this book uh, has uh, the Ten Commandments. Now, it, is, it, it gives me a list of the Ten Commandments, but then I picked up the Ten Commandments from somewhere else, and they kind of read a little different. So I'm going to read each one of these the way that I picked them up okay so the first commandment and I'm going to give each one of you ladies uh, the opportunity to explain this this commandment so I'm going to start with um, with Adele thou shalt have no gods before me and uh, in one one uh, version and then the other one says I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt out of the house of bondage you shall have no other gods before me Please explain, under your belief. Okay, what that says, the, the Jewish people are and were the only people that had the one God belief. And that later the Christians had adapted that idea of one God. And the other Gentiles, they had many gods. They worshipped many gods. And uh, so it is what God identified for Israel was that that he was one God and there is no one beside him. He was the one and only God. And he was to be worshipped as the God. Yahweh. Okay. Yahweh. Yes. Or Adonai. That's, that's another name that he's known by. Okay. There are many names that God is known by. Oh. That, repre that represent characteristics of who he is. Okay. All right. So G capital G-O-D is okay also. That's something that the Gentiles implemented, but uh, he has this Hebrew name, yod vav vav That's his Hebrew name. Okay. Yahweh, Adonai, El Shaddai. There are a number of names that are characteristic okay. of who he is. Okay. All right. Evangelist, would you like me to read the commandment again, or you got it? I got it. Okay. Go for it. Um, what what, is what it? we teach in the apostolic church is that we teach that scripture means is that we are not supposed to have no other gods before before him which mean where we are not supposed to um we're, we're not supposed to reference or praise anybody but but god which there's only one god which he is the very own supreme being 
Okay. All right. Looks like we got a caller coming in. I don't know if this caller is uh, who this caller is, but anyway, we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and and uh, we'll we'll wait for my guy to get the caller ready. Okay. So next commandment: Thou shalt not make graven images. Okay, so this is number two. Thou shalt not make graven images. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord, thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. And this other one, I believe, says the same thing. Oh, no. It says, you shall not make for yourself a carved image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquities of the fathers on the, ch on the children to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me, but showing mercy to thousands to those who love me and keep my commandments. Okay. All right. Okay. So, ladies, uh, <laughs> I tell you what, ladies, we're going to have to let y'all take that question home with you. Okay. And uh, when you go home, think about it. Come back next week with an answer to that. We're going to take a break. We're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, the rubber is going to meet the road. We'll see you in a minute. Hi, this is Wylena, the Las Vegas Queen of Gospel. First of all, I really do appreciate your listening and viewing my show every week. I would greatly appreciate your financial assistance as well to keep my show on the air. Please just make some type of contribution, $5, $10, $20, $50, $100 or more, whatever you desire. Please log on to www.wileenertvshow.com and click the pay button. Or please send your check or money order to Wileener, that's spelled W-Y-L-E-A-N-E-R, to 420 North Nellis Boulevard, Suite A3. Las Vegas, Nevada, 89110. Also, if you would like to be a guest on the show, please call 702-242-2100 or email me at wileenertvshow at aol.com. That's all for now, and thanks again for your continued support. Blessings to you. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, listen here. We are back, and I have my females on with me today, and we're going to be wrapping it up, and we're coming back next week. But listen, I have my sponsor on the line right now, so I'm going to give him a couple of minutes to tell you guys what his business is all about. Hello? Uh, Hel how are you doing, Ms. Paulina? I'm doing, Leonard. I'm doing fine, Mr. Leonard. How are you? Doing very well, thank you. Doing very well. Okay, okay. You want to tell us about MBDA? Well, yeah. MBDA um, is uh, the MBDA uh, stands for the Minority Business Development Agency. We're an agency of the U.S. Department of Commerce. And uh, we are the only agency that is charged to um, assist minority businesses uh, on the national on the national level. We um, are charged to do that um, in in uh, this way. We provide management and technical assistance to businesses. We assist these businesses with finding access to opportunities, meaning contracts and procurement. Um, and those contracts and procurements can be everything from construction contracts to service contracts. Um, um, if a company has something to sell, uh, okay. we assist uh, with that also. Okay. Um, and uh, in that process, uh, we are also advocates for the utilization of minority businesses, meaning that if um, there um, are uh, interests say like uh, the Department, Nevada Department of Transportation uh, who uh, needs some, some um, how do you say it, um, a little bit of prodding to, um, to uh, you know, step up and, 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 and hire some of our business owners. 
we talk with these folks okay. to try and act as um, okay. um, a resource okay. so that they can find these businesses. Okay. All right. Well, listen, I'm going to have to cut you off. Okay. Thank you very much for calling in and, 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 and everybody knows who you are and, and we're looking forward to it. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to know we'll be back next week with the ladies on the spot. Okay. Y'all know what I tell you every week. You got to study for yourself. There's so many different teachers and beliefs out there. You will be confused. So you have got to study for yourself. I 